Hey everybody, Doug Addison here. Welcome to Spirit Connection. It is December 6, 2017, and it's the last one of the year. Excited for what's going to be happening, and I got some prophetic words for you, and uh, it's going to be a, a really great time. Uh, for, and also, we've got uh, the In Light Connection team. If you're watching this live on my website, you can type in your questions, be sure to chat in things because the team will get those back to me in the second half of the broadcast. We're going to be doing some live Q&A. We also gather those and I answer those on podcasts and other things, bring them into books. So we take the questions seriously. We might not be able to get to all of them, but we try our best. Uh, hey, listen, this is an important time, especially if you know anybody or you have been dis uh, struggling with discouragement. Uh, I have an activation word and prayer that's going to be uh, it's going to really break things off, I'm telling you. So get ready for this new thing right now. And um, we're going to uh, just get going here in a second. Uh, DougAddison.com, you can stay connected with me. Go to my website and you can download my free ebook, uh, which is How to Hear the Voice of God Clearly for Yourself. Also, stay connected with me on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, excuse me, Facebook, The Doug Addison, Instagram and Twitter, Doug T. Addison. Also follow my daily prophetic words in case you haven't already. You can get them by email, by the way, uh, on my website. That's how I do it. Get it delivered right into my email box. I, I can hear God through my own words. Anyway, check out my weekly Spirit Connection podcast, too. If you like the webcast, the podcasts are wild as well. Let's pray right now. God, we... We thank you for what you're doing right now. We ask God, Holy Spirit, come. We pray, Lord, that even on the replay or on the live event right now, that you can move. You are beyond time, and you are moving right now outside of time, and everything's going to start to flow together right now. We pray for the breakthrough anointing to come in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I got these words from the Lord. December is going to be a time when things will begin to flow together. Many people have been experiencing promotions, whether, believe it or not, since uh, Yom Kippur, back in September of this year, people got promotions in the spirit, and other people who hadn't been uh, utilizing their gifts got, uh, they didn't get de demotions, but some of their stuff might have gotten shifted. Assignments, we had a massive amount of a shifting of assignments. So right now you're going to see the evidence of that promotion. Watch for changes to start happening quickly. Get ready for what could be possibly be. Listen, one of the greatest Christmases of your life. God is the giver of good gifts. And this year, the Lord says he's bringing some things like spiritual gifts, dreams and visions, wisdom, Revelation, starting in December, the Lord spoke to me. He said, uh, Ezekiel 3.3, 3. Then he said to me, Son of man, eat the scroll I am giving you and fill your stomach with it. So I ate it and it tasted sweet as honey in my mouth. You know, I had a heavenly encounter about this in November. And I saw the Lord giving spiritual scrolls of Revelation. Some of them were like books, others were like scrolls, but it was revelation coming, plans, strategies, wisdom, revelation, insight that you're going to need for the coming year. And the Lord told me, he said this, to expect to see this to start in December, to tell people is going to flow through the new year. And just as, it, as it, uh, Ezekiel 3.3 3 said, it tasted sweet as honey. And unlike the book, uh, the, the scroll that uh, was that John ate, you know, in, in the book of Revelation, it was sweet as honey, but it was bitter in the stomach. Oh, no, this was just sweet as honey. The Lord is going to bring you some good things. And he said that this is coming starting in December. To get ready, too, for, for double blessings, double anointing coming. Isaiah 61, 7 in the message. Because you got a double dose of trouble... Uh, and more than your share of contempt, your inheritance in the land will be doubled and your joy will go on forever. The Lord is saying this right now. He's saying, listen, 
because it has been a difficult time, it's been a double difficult time, he's now going to release a greater level of inheritance, a greater level of blessing, double for your trouble. Uh, many people have been going through difficult times, uh, but the Lord is releasing a double portion right now. Don't lose sight of this, what God is doing in your life. So, you know, we're stepping into one of the most pivotal years in history, 2018. The earth is groaning, so to speak. It's like birth pains of the coming great revival that is being prepared right now. The Lord has seen your suffering. He's heard your tears. He's seen the tears. He's collecting them in the scrolls of tears. And there's going to be a repayment come for those who have sown in tears. Even those who couldn't cry anymore, or maybe you couldn't even cry to begin with, but God's going to do He says, get ready to reap with joy. God is going to send the wind from heaven that's going to blow things into place for you. Listen, the wind of change comes every year. I talk about this angel that I encountered back in 2012. Uh, 2012, I started observing a powerful angel that would come each year right around March to April. And when the wind of change angel would come, not the winds of change, it's a different angel. This is, uh, it blows things. This is, the wind of change is like a, a straight line wind. It, it doesn't blow around. I mean, it blows through, reveals things that have been hidden that the enemy's been trying to hold against you. It blows things up. Uh, also, Psalm 104.4, you can read it, you know, about uh, things that will be revealed. Things that may have been holding you back will now become much clearer, much easier. The wind of that change also blows things into place for you, as well as revealing things. So what might have uh, looked like very uncertain times, very chaotic, right now, right now is a time when Wow, when the wind of change starts to blow, it's going to put things into order quite quickly. And uh, it's going to be a really good time. Hebrews 1.7, this is in the New Living Translation. Regarding the angels, he says, He sends the angels like winds and His servants like flames of fire. So the Lord spoke to me that the reason for the wind of change coming early this year, normally it's in the spring for in the U.S., the reason it's early this year is because we've been through such a strong attack of the enemy. And there's been such a strong, heavy discouragement and hopelessness. So God is going to move right now. He's the God of justice. He's balancing those scales. When the enemy lays on heavy attack, guess what? Wow, you get heavy revelation and anointing, heavy gifts, heavy repayment. And so that's what's happening right now. And we're going to start seeing this in December. I've never seen it come this early. And uh, this is uh, because we're going to experience an amazing new revival. And Satan does not want you to see it. He wants to distract you. That's why all this heavy stuff's going on right now. There's been an attack of discouragement. And it's been very heavy hopelessness. Many people have been tempted even to give up, to give in. To, to lay it down. Uh, and this resistance has been going on for a while. I mean, I've, I've been seeing this happen in the spiritual realm. I can hear it happening where people are saying, Oh Lord, take me to heaven now. Don't pray that prayer, guys. You don't want to pray that prayer. Say, Lord, give me the strength to endure here on earth so that we can bring earth on earth as it is in heaven. You, you know, I'm just saying, don't come into agreement with accidentally cursing yourself. If you've been saying, Lord, take me to heaven, all you have to do is say, Lord, forgive me. Give me the strength to go on right now. But what, what's going to come of this will become rever greater revelation into your calling, into your divine assignments from God. Many people have been struggling with old thoughts, depression. Uh, come. Some, of them, some people have been contemplating suicide and giving up. But I want to prophesy right now into your spirit, a prophetic word that's going to break this off. And I want to release this. And whether it's you or you know someone, you'll be able to pick this anointing up. I'm going to release this at the end of the broadcast. And, uh, and you're, you'll be able to get this wind of change. But the Lord reminded me 
of this, of what's happening right now. Back when I first encountered the Wind of Change Angel in 2012, I had a prophetic dream. I had posted it on my website and on Spirit Connection back then. But here's the dream. In 2012, I saw a wind of change coming. It started to blow off the ocean and onto the land. And as it approached, it blew things up, debris so strong that it was nearly blinding. Then a huge battleship actually rolled over and crashed in, uh, you know, uh, some buildings. In the dream, I knew the wind was spiritual and not literal. I know it wasn't a storm from, from, uh, from the enemy, but I knew this was from the Lord. In the dream, many people were blaming God and thought it was the enemy. It was binding Satan, but the Lord spoke and he said, the wind of change is coming. And listen, that's the end of the dream in 2012. Then I start seeing this angel come every year. There's a massive wind of change that is coming. And it's going to shift the spiritual climate from what's happening right now. There's a negative spiritual climate. And because uh, the Lord's been really calling people everywhere to get out of that negativity, to flip this negativity. I've been talking about it even put out a lot of stuff on Facebook and Twitter around the internet about uh, no longer complaining because what you sow you shall reap because we've now we've we're reaping a closed heaven from a negative atmosphere and uh, I've been calling people the Lord's been calling people but now there's the Lord stepping in himself and he says I'm going to send a wind of change and I'm going to blow away the things that have held you back and get this Remember the dream I had? It was a battleship. The Lord said he's going to turn over the things you've been battling with in the past. And it's going to be like a new ship to take you to the next place. So the dream was very symbolic. God is blowing away the debris. He's preparing us right now for a dramatic change. And we need to embrace changes that are coming right now. Don't be afraid. This is not the time. You need to fight discouragement and fear. Get through fear. It's the biggest thing that's holding people back is fear. Fight that discouragement because over the next few months, you're going to see some several things, several waves of turnaround. They're going to come in waves. It's going to be uh, very encouraging. Don't be discouraged because the wind of change, listen, this is what I got. The wind of change is going to awaken those who've been on injured reserve or hidden. They're called the hidden ones. Maybe it's you or someone you know. And I know there's a lot of people who feel like you have a calling on your life, or maybe you know or a family member or a son or a daughter who has a calling on their life, stepped away or whatever. Or maybe you've had a calling on your life, you've been wounded or maybe you're overlooked or it looked like you felt like you've missed it. Guess what? Oh my goodness, I got some good news because this is coming right now to awaken the forgotten ones. And this is a spiritual encounter that I just had in November. I was taken to a place where many people uh, were wounded and laying on a spiritual battlefield. And there was a number of wounded warriors who had been taken out. Uh, they'd been taken out of action. They were laying there. Uh, and uh, the Lord said this, Ezekiel 37, 9. You might know this, but listen, this is a new, a new understanding of it. Then he said, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come breath from the four winds and breathe upon these slain that they may live. Then I saw the Lord blow the wind of Ezekiel 37 upon people on this battlefield. And I hadn't realized it until now. I had not realized this before. But the wind of change is actually is exactly the same wind from Ezekiel 37. And it's the it's the breath of the Lord. And it's the breath, the four winds come from Ezekiel 37. It's from all sides, north, south, east, and west. And as the wind of change blows, it will revive people, bring you back to life. Those who've been wounded by uh, negative uh, Christian experiences or maybe a negative church experience, 
uh, many wounded warriors have been taken out by uh, by the uh, the action of uh, a friendly fire. Actually, people within the kingdom have taken a lot of the people out. A lot of you, even I have been wounded in the past. I've gotten through these things. I want to encourage you to let go of that pain of the past. Get into forgiveness. This is a time to grab hold of the of the fruit of the spirit in your life. These wounded warriors will play a strong role in the next move of God. I'm telling you, I saw many of them lying on that kingdom battlefield with no one to attend to their wounds. And that's happening right now, friends. Then that wind came, blew life into them. They were strengthened. They began to rise up with new vision. And what looked like losses right now turns is going to be a turnaround for your gain. And the Lord says the wind of change is starting in December. And I want to talk about a few of these things. People are saying, well, where is it in the Bible? I'm glad you ask. Matthew 8, 26 and 27. Jesus replied, you have, you have little faith. Why are you so afraid? Now, this is when the wind was blowing so bad it was going to capsize the boat. Now, this is an interesting wind. I just want to talk about different winds here. And um, you, you can associate, draw the connect the dots on the wind to change with this but Jesus steps in the boat with the disciples and he says why are you afraid they're about to die and he then he said this he got up and he rebuked the winds and the waves and they completely calmed down and the men in the boat with him were amazed he says what kind of man is this even the winds and the waves obey him i want to say folks god the Lord God is rebuking the storms in your life right now. And you're going to see things calm down and you can do it. In fact, I rebuke the storm right now. I take authority over the storm in your life. I'm hearing all kinds of curses flying. I can hear curses. I'm hearing them fly off of people. Um, and they come out, when I hear curses, they come out like ringing and they, and they just all kinds of noises. I'm hearing this happen right now. So that means the Lord wants to move on this right now. So, Father, we pray in Jesus' name to break off those curses. Break off anything that has held people down in fear. They were in fear and lack of faith. In Jesus' name, blow in life in. And he's going to do this. He's going to give you authority to do it. <clears throat> and he's going to increase your faith in Jesus' name. Here's another verse that talks about the winds. Mark 13, 27. And he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds of the earth, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. And God, I tell you, God is releasing his gathering angels. That's what this one is. He sends them to gather up. That's what the revival is like. It's done with the wind. The four winds come. And I've seen the gathering angels. I went to, went to South Africa in 2009 and I had a gathering angel encounter. You can Google Doug Addison and gathering angels and read about several things that I've seen over the years. And uh, the gathering angels are coming in the four winds and we're going to see something. They operate in the wind of the Lord. They gather those who are going to be part or awaken them who are going to be part of the next revival. <clears throat> Another one, Acts 2, 1 and 2, the day of Pentecost came and they were together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind. And it filled the whole house where they were. They were there praying. It says they were sitting, but they had been there praying for, for quite some time. And just like the Lord brought the new sound from heaven, it was a sound of a wind. And it brought the day of Pentecost. It brought the Holy Spirit. It brought what sounded like a rushing wind brought about a major change. That was a wind of change that came in a sound. The impartation of the Holy Spirit comes in the wind of the Lord, which is also the wind of change is coming right now. Revelation 7, 1 is a real interesting one. And after this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds uh, from the earth to prevent any of them from blowing on the land or the sea or on any tree. Now, this is really interesting. The Lord is now going to command the winds in the difficult times 
to stop blowing over the next year. Right now, we're under heavy fire, heavy winds. In fact, we're seeing earthquakes, fires, floods. As we're recording this, there's a fire seven miles from me here in Los Angeles. There's, there's fires, floods, there's things we have not seen. It's off the charts. We can't even keep up with it. But the Lord is going to send angels to suddenly begin to hold it back to winds in your life. Now, it doesn't mean that we're going to stop seeing disasters or anything by any means. It's saying you'll be able to operate in peace like Jesus did in the boat. He got in the boat. He rebuked the winds. We're going to see radical change happen in our lives and those around us. The wind of change is going to bring these things. I want to encourage you, read this or listen to this again and study this. Study to begin to ask the Lord to reveal the wind of change that's going to come. Did, there's a veil between heaven and earth. Did you know that? There, there's a veil. We're in a season right now that heaven is opening up like never before. We're, we're being prepared by God for some of the most amazing global revivals, global experiences with heaven. If Hey, if... If the enemy can come and bring storms and earthquakes and fires and floods and havoc, the Lord is going to respond now and we're going to see something. He's getting us ready to receive and release the prophetic mysteries from heaven. These mysteries will, will actually expand our understanding of what is already written in the Bible and how it applies to our life today. This is new revelation. It's happening right now. God is opening up our understanding to things, and in 2018, it's going to increase uh, because previously these things were sealed away, and they're now the revelation of them is needed right now. And so, what was previously sealed is now going to be revealed. Now, this does not mean that we abandon the foundations of our faith or our teachings of Jesus Christ. This is actually an example <clears throat> of this. Is uh, it wasn't until the coming of the Holy Spirit uh, in the book of Acts that the disciples and the apostles begin to understand the Old Testament or the Torah. Suddenly, wow, they say, oh my goodness. They suddenly saw Jesus. They saw themselves in the ancient writings. And also the apostle Paul went on beyond that. And he saw the revival happening, uh, the uh, disciple John, the ap uh, apostle John had the book of Revelation encounter. I'm just saying we are in a time of expanded revelation that's going to start coming. And on earth as it is in heaven is happening right now. So if we're, if we're not careful, you know, we can read right through these New Testament experiences and, and not realize that God is still a supernatural God. That yes, He's in the book. Yes, oh my goodness, He's in the book. But His Holy Spirit will come and He will show you the things that are yet to come. He will show you things that are going to actually uh, blow your mind. Things that you had no idea were, were possible are going to, all things are possible for those who believe. And so it's, you know, the Apostle Paul said this, I've become a servant to the commission God gave me to present to you uh, uh, the Word of God in its fullness, in the mystery that has been hidden for ages. Uh, and, and generations that it's now disclosed but to God's people. That's an example there. Colossians 1.25 uh, is, is the mystery that the Lord is now doing. And we're going to see these things in <clears throat> a season in our life where the earth, our lives on earth are going to change radically as we grow into our understanding of what Jesus meant when he said, on earth as it is in heaven. And as many of you heard, I started having these encounters last April, and it was right around Passover. It's been off the charts, folks. I've never had anything like it, and um, of course, it came with some warfare as well, uh, but I just want to say this, that the Lord is going to equip you for this. Now, I want to share with you an encounter I had on November 15th, just a few weeks ago, that's part of the prophetic word I'm releasing this month. It was from my heavenly journal. And while I was praying early on the, in the morning on uh, November 15, 2017, I was taken into a spiritual vision from the Lord. The Lord spoke to me several Bible verses. Here's how it works. He, show, he gives me these verses. 
I open them up in the Bible, and then I begin to have these interactive visions with the Lord. And he starts to explain them. And here's what happened on November 15th. <clears throat> Isaiah 6, 9. Go tell his people, be ever hearing, but never understanding. Be ever seeing, but never perceiving. Make the heart of the people calloused and make their ears dull uh, and close their eyes. Now, otherwise, they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn and be healed. And I recognize this. This was a prophecy from Matthew 13 that Jesus talked about with parables. It was real interesting. What do you mean callous people's heart? You, yeah, you look at that, you're going to say, what, what are you talking about, Jesus? Because they ask him, why do you speak in parables? And he quotes this from Isaiah. And he says, because many people have callous hearts. They don't have eyes to see and ears to hear. We need this. So in this encounter, Jesus quoted this to me. And he said, you have to have eyes to see and ears to hear to understand this new year. And so in the encounter that I'm, uh, that I'm having in, in, on November 15th, I'm now standing in front of the Lord. And my eyes are now opened and and i'm giving you uh, this is what jesus said i'm going to give you and others an anointing of hearing understanding and perceiving and this is not just for me this i got this in november but this is for anybody it's what he told me that i needed to give this away and that's what i'm going to release here at the end of this broadcast but <clears throat> those who've been looking for deeper understanding and wisdom are about to get it and I was taken back in the Bible again in this encounter to Ezekiel 40. And the hand of the Lord was upon me. And he took me there in visions. This is, I'm quoting Ezekiel 40. I'm skipping a little bit ahead in some of this for context. But in visions of God, he took me to the land of Israel. And he set me on a very high mountain. And I saw a man whose appearance was like bronze. And he was standing with a measuring rod in his hand. And the man said to me, Son of man, look with your eyes and hear with your ears and pay attention to everything I am going to show you. For, uh, for this is why you have been brought here, to tell the house of Israel everything you see. Now, my, I'm in this vision. I'm standing on the mountain. Jesus is there. This angel's there saying these words to me. But I realized this went way beyond talking to the house of Israel. This was now talking about a modern context, the modern church, modern people right now. <clears throat> so the Lord said, pay attention to everything that I'm going to show you over the next few months. Then the bronze colored angel from, from uh, Ezekiel 40 was, that was standing there, he had the measuring rod in his hand. And he said to me, look with your eyes, pay attention. Hear with your ears everything that is going to be shown to you. The coming revelation over the next few months. He said this. Seven months of revelation is going to come over the next seven months. There's going to be revelation for the next seven years. The Lord said, I'm going to take you and many of my people into a time of seven months from November to June, I think it is, um, uh, to yeah, June 2018 into dreams and visions and the revelation is going to be opened up over the next seven months that's going to affect the next seven years of your life. Isaiah 40 uh, is actually the next thing the Lord had said. And Isaiah 40 uh, verse 2, it says, Speak tenderly and proclaim um, that her hard service has been completed and that her sin has been paid for and she has received from the Lord's hand double for her sins. Now the Lord said, many people have gone through hard and difficult service, hard service, but these hard times are now going to end up with that double anointing, that double, double anointing that's going to come. God's going to do it. He's going to bring it. <clears throat> Those who have cried out, I've already given this word. This is where it came from. Those who have cried out are going to receive deeper joy. Isaiah 40, verse 3. Now I'm going to do this commissioning right now. The first part was about the hard times. It's going to shift over you. Isaiah 40, verse 3. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord 
and make straight his, his paths in the wilderness, a highway of God is going to be made. The Lord said to me, I'm raising up four runners right now, and I'm going to anoint them with the John the Baptist's anointing. I'm going to prepare in the desert, in the dry time. I'm going to make straight the paths. This is what we're stepping into, folks. I'm going to send the spirit of Elijah, the Lord says, to awaken the forerunners, to awaken the John the Baptist. These are the ones I saw in the battlefield. These are the for forgotten ones. It's, this is probably you. If you've been following my prophetic words, like John the Baptist, they'll go outside the camp and begin to prepare the hearts to receive what God is doing. Here's another one. <clears throat> the Lord, this is the same encounter I was having. And it was Isaiah 40, verse 7. The grass withers and the flowers fall because the breath of the Lord, the Lord blows on them. The word of the Lord stands forever. Lift up. Do not be afraid. See, his reward is with him and his rec recompense accompanies him who gathers the lambs in his arms and holds them close to his heart gently as he leads them. Listen, the Lord says, I'm commissioning people right now with the Isaiah 40 anointing, and I'm going to breathe on you the wind of change. And it's going to result in what I just read. It's going to result in the gathering of the lambs. It's going to result in a great revival coming of the rejected Ezekiel uh, 37, breath of the Lord. He's going to breathe on you. And then in this encounter still, the Lord said this, uh, that uh, in his breath, he, I saw the Lord. He, he brought this. I saw when he breathed, flowers began to spring up. Things started to happen. I felt new strength come into my body in the encounter. I was laying there in the wilderness. And then suddenly I'm standing up and I realize, wow, you know, it was a wilderness. I didn't realize, but suddenly it became teeming with life. Then the Lord said, I'm going to give life through my breath. As I breathe this new anointing upon you, you'll be able to breathe it upon other people and they will be able to breathe it as well upon others. And I want to release the breath of the, of the Lord, the wind of change, anointing that's coming right now from Ezekiel 37 over the dry bones, over those who are laying slain on the field. I tell you, God is moving right now. So let's pray and activate this. Lord, we thank you for the Ezekiel 40 anointing, the anointing of Ezekiel 37, anointing of the wind, the breath of heaven, the breath of the Lord is blowing now. And Lord, you told me that I could release this. And right now I'm hearing curses break. I'm hurt. I'm hearing these things break off, break, 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 break off the things from the past, break off fear. We break off the blindness and now release the wind of change. I release that wind from Ezekiel 37. I prophesy over the dry bones, receive the breath of the Lord. I prophesy over those who were slain by friendly fire, those who were driven away, those who were misunderstand, those who have not understood uh, you know, the, the season and have felt like you've missed it. I breathe upon you right now the breath of the Lord, that breath. The Lord said to do this, to breathe that breath and act activate those dry bones. Activate it, activate it, activate it right now. Lord, wow, I'm hearing more curses go right now. The spirit of suicide breaking, breaking, breaking spirit of depression. Break, break, break the spirit of discouragement and, and spiritual blindness and spiritual deafness. That's what I'm hearing. Deaf ears opening, blind eyes opening. Don't look at what the enemy's trying to send at you. Oh, my goodness. In the name of Jesus, amen. I tell you, I was writing this yesterday, and I, you know, I was writing this part about the debris and everything blowing up, but my wife and I went for a walk in the neighborhood, and a wind came, a strong wind, and blew debris in my eyes. I suffered for three hours, and um, I knew that this was going to be something big. The enemy didn't want this to get out there, and even while I've been talking, I've been almost deafened by the curses coming off of people. And I'm excited for what's going to happen. 
And I want to hear back from you as this starts to happen. I want you to take this to someone else as well. Get someone to listen to this who needs this message. Get ready for the new year. Hey, my website's dougaddison.com. Also, uh, we're going we're gonna to bring something out. It's a great special for this month. Um, it's, it's called Out of the Vault. We're bringing something out from a long time ago. It's, a, it's one month only. It's my original training that I developed years ago from on the street research. I was a uh, missionary to people in the New Age movement. I was a forerunner in prophetic outreach. I interpreted over 30,000 dreams, tattoos. I gave prophetic words everywhere. Did you see me on Father of Lights? Or maybe you've been out of my one of my outreaches in the past. I wouldn't tell you for years. I only had one message. Yeah, it was 15 hours long, but I had one message. And it's in the vault. It's been in the vault for a few years now, but I'm bringing it back out this month. My team was like, wow, we've, uh, it's called uh, the Prophetic Lifestyle Training Kit. And it's the online training that uh, it, it will teach you how to hear the voice of God, especially for others, how to connect with people, how to give words tailored, just like Jesus did for each person that you encounter. I tell you what, everybody was shocked when I would do the outreach, do this workshop and the outreach. You don't have to do, uh, you can get this material, you can become an outreach, it's so wild. I tell you, I was so thrilled. I, I traveled 150 days a year uh, for eight years doing this because when we would go on an outreach at the mall and give encouraging words, do things like that, people would line up at the mic and have encounters. It was so thrilled, but I wanna say, this is something that you can get. Uh, say, I just say no to evangelism. Just, uh, say no to evangelism, but to say yes to this, which causes people to open up to the to the gospel and not be closed off. The prophetic does that. This is a no uh, pressure method, no formula. This is uh, is something that we're going to bring out for the month of December. My entire prophetic lifestyle training kit. It's almost 75% off. The original value was $150 because it's got all the audios. It's got the training kit. You can take this and train people in your church or your community. It's yours once you buy it. And so it's, we're going to take it. Um, it's going to be at $39. It includes several ebooks uh, that I had released at the time. Some of them are no longer available. And uh, it, it, grab hold of it because it's going it's, to it'll blow you away. And we've updated it. Now, um, the content with my original stuff. Anyway, how to prophesy to people outside the church, how to have a divine encounter in Starbucks, how Jesus dealt with non-believers, not Sadducees and Pharisees. I looked up all the verses. How to recognize when someone, where they are in their process, and help nudge them one step closer, then you'll be successful. Learn how to communicate without, without sounding religious as well. Anyway, also the difference between prophetic words and psychic words. And uh, just check it out. There's a link below, dougaddison.store, uh, and it ends December 31st. Also, we got a, a special for uh, uh, the month of December. <clears throat> Not all my books, ebooks, and courses and workshops. The MP3, uh, MP3 is 25% off for the month. They make great Christmas gifts for people. Guess what? The top five, thanks for everyone who took, took place in the Black Friday sale. The top five of these, if you want to buy them for someone else, was my, my message. Number one, love not judge. Powerful. Number two was understand your dreams now book. Number three was discovering the supernatural book. Number four was encountering heaven, the online workshop, which opens things up for you. Number five was how to flip your financial future. These make great gifts. Also consider giving. It's a time of year to give. Thank you for all of you who donated to Inlight Connection this year, and especially on Giving Tuesday. And our partners, we love you, and we couldn't do what we do without you. So we're so grateful for all the gifts that you give us all year. And in fact, uh, Giving Tuesday, we shared uh, some new stories about the videos of people whose lives are changing. So check it out. Uh, people that, that are having a really radical turnaround. You can go to DougAddison.com forward slash give. Consider becoming a partner. That's people who give every month. I send out a special uh, email. Uh, I mean, excuse me, a special video every month for the partners to pray and activate you. I also pray for the partners every single day. So you might want to consider that and consider uh, giving by text. Just text L-O-V-E to 45888 or Doug Addison dot com forward slash give hey everybody i'm so excited we've got pam 
in the uh, chat room with me and she's been uh, pulling up over uh, the internet now and giving me some of these things let me shift gears and get over to the to that screen and see uh, what we got going and hopefully I'll be able to see these I sometimes have to make them a little bigger because of you know God is healing me all the time uh, but apparently not fully healed of my, uh, here we go. Whoa, I'm healed. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, anyway, I, I'm trying to get this bigger on my screen. Thanks, Pam, for doing this. And thanks for oh, my whole team. Love you guys so much. All right, we're going to get into some Q&A. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Here's one from Shannon. My family's struggling because prophetic words uh, that were spoken over us are not happening. What do we do? Well, you know, you have to discern. I have a book uh, called God Spoke Now What? How to Activate It. And there might be a case that some of these things were, were either for a season that didn't happen or maybe you need to do something. Maybe they're down the road. We, I don't know. Uh, it's each one. I get this a lot. That's why I wrote that book, God Spoke Now What? Because there's a way to activate things and look and 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 see but some words might have been from a previous season where someone said no or maybe they're a season down the road here's what i recommend it for everyone if this is happening to you ask god just begin to take one of those prophetic words don't take a bunch of them focus maybe three days in a row and say lord speak to me about this release your spirit of truth over this that i may understand my time and season now all right here's one from julie Sometimes I'm angry with God and, uh, and hold him responsible for bad things that have happened. Does this, uh, does this open up a case uh, in, in the courts of heaven? Well, I recommend to everybody, and Julie, is bad things are not from God. They are not from God. It's from Satan. I tell you, it is from Satan, and he's blaming God. So, uh, if you're blaming God, everybody, what I recommend, first thing you do is drop your case against God and understand who it is that's hitting things. And so and you got to drop the anger and, and go into forgiveness. Remember, Jesus said the greatest commandment was love God. Love your neighbor as yourself. And he says that's the greatest commandment is to love God. I tell you, when I got into this, when I understood this, and I got healed just last year, this year actually, I got healed of a massive amount of multiple chemical sensitivity and Lyme disease when I let go of my anger and disappointments from the past that I didn't even know. Even as a prophet, I didn't even know. As a minister, as a Christian, I didn't know I was holding on to these things. And I let go, and my goodness, within two months, my body started getting better it's so good to let go of these things from the past. So uh, does this open up a court case in heaven? I don't quite understand that question, Julie, but what I'd recommend is just letting go of your case and then begin to ask God to show you things. Here's one from Jules. Uh, both of my kids have been having trouble with nightmares this week, and it's been really bad. And why is this and what do we do? Well, uh, a couple of things. If it's just this week, there is something going on in the spiritual atmosphere right now. There is a spiritual wind from heaven that's being released. And, uh, and so as these things happen, especially kids, they pick up on stuff. They're very sensitive. Also, we had the super moon this week. And usually right around that full moon and times like this, you, you, there's a lot of witchcraft kicking up. And so the kids might be picking up on that. But also they have horrifying nightmares. Uh, you, um, in my book, Understand Your Dream Now, uh, uh, Dreams Now, I talk about my nightmare as a kid and how I got through it, and also about children's dreams and night terrors and why it's that's actually a good thing because why would Satan be working overtime on those kids unless they're a threat? In other words, oh boy, oh boy, you're sitting on something big with your kids. And I want to encourage you. I don't want to just minimize this. It is a difficult time. You want to pray through and ask the Lord to give you, reveal the specific strategy for you and your children. Here's a question from Al. How do you tell the difference between the spiritual realm and the natural realm? Well, the natural realm is quite easy. 
You know, it's right, right there. You know, it's right in front of you. The spiritual realm sometimes reflects the supernatural, sometimes reflects the natural. Sometimes, not always, but sometimes. It's like the temple in the Old Testament. It's like the feasts and the festivals of the Old Testament. They were actually a foreshadow of the coming of the new covenant. Jesus was hidden in those things. So that's kind of like natural things, right? Think about the temple uh, and, the, and the different things in the feasts and the festivals of the Old Testament. Those were natural things. Now we read the New Testament, we see them fulfilled. And now we see actually in the book of Revelation, those are spiritual things. They're in heaven right now. So begin to ask God to open your eyes. Begin to pray. Ezekiel, I uh, know, excuse me. Begin to pray Ephesians 1:18 to open the eyes of your heart that you may be enlightened to see the goodness of the Lord. Ask the Lord to do, begin to pray over it every day and ask him to show you the difference. I had a breakthrough uh, last week and the Lord said, this is so powerful right now is a prayer time right in this room right now that I'm standing in. And it was so powerful. The Lord says, go outside and look. It's a sign in the, in the heavens right now over what's going on over your life. So I did, and I took a picture. There was a whirlwind, uh, you know, the, a, a wind coming from, uh, there was no wind going on outside in Los, An Los Angeles this time of year. But it was a whirlwind in a cloud. And another thing, it was the sign I had seen, and it was in a cloud, and it was in the natural realm. So sometimes the supernatural will report uh, like sometimes it could be as well, you might have a flat tire, could be symbolic that you need more of the Holy Spirit, which is air. Good question. Question from Sandy. What does it mean when God hides us? Well, being hidden uh, <clears throat> means that he puts you into a time like Joseph in Genesis. He had these dreams uh, right around Genesis 38, I think it is. You might be quoting wrong. I'm not sure if it's 32 or 38. But uh, he had these dreams, and he had dreams as a child, and they were very powerful that, that he would be, you know, in charge and all this stuff. God hid him for a number of years, almost 17 years. He put him in hiding. Then in, in Genesis 40 and Genesis 41, he comes out of hiding. He was hidden for that special time. God might be doing that with you, the hidden ones. <clears throat> he hides you so that he can train you. He's hidden me for years. I'm telling you, no one knew about me. They still don't know about me. And no one knew about me for years because he kept me hidden for my own safety as he worked these things out of my soul, as he worked out the Colossians 3 issues. That's what you want to do is take a look at Colossians 3. And God will, uh, you know, he doesn't want you to become holy just by for by obeying rules he wants you to get this holy spirit in you and allow him to change your heart so that you're coming into align with many of the things that are mentioned in colossians 3 and you're going to see something happen here's one from jenna i've had many different passions that line up with prophetic words that i've received but i've been confused on where to start well that's a good one jenna what you do begin to go, or be, go back to the beginning. Go back and look and see where God may have spoken to you early on. For me, the first one. I remember the first like prophetic word that I heard the Lord say, Isaiah 61, I don't even know. It was 1988. I was a meth addict coming off of drugs in 1987, came out of the occult. 1988, I hear the Lord say, I hear the Holy Spirit say, Isaiah 61, I open it up and it's my life calling. And I had all these other prophetic words, but you know what? I went back to that one. My life calling. That, <clears throat> that he's anointed you to preach the good news to the poor. And send you to, to, uh, to bind up the broken heart and release from captives those who are in prison. And I want to tell you, that has never changed, Jenna. So go back to the early ones. The, the ones that, that God may have spoken to you. Or ask them for something fresh. Ask the Lord to bring things into line. Most people aren't hearing right now for different reasons. I've been talking about this. It might be that there's, there's too much complaining and grumbling going on around you or within yourself because that will close the heavens. If you're not hearing the Lord, the first thing I recommend is a negativity fast. And it doesn't have to be that long. Just go through this time of cleansing 
the open heavens, the heavens around you, and the Lord will become more clear. Not only that, go back, or whatever it is, just ask the Lord to speak to you once each day. That's it. Don't complicate it. Be sure to take time to listen. You know, I've been, I've been an avid prayer, an intercessor. And they were, for years I would intercede. The Lord finally said, would you just be quiet today? Because I've been trying to tell you the answer, but you're talking too much in prayer. And I went, wow. And I started having to take these prayer walks where I would pray. This was years ago, I'd have to pray and listen, pray and listen. Then I'd have to take all day just to listen. Now, I'm just in this conversation with the Lord all the time because the heavens are open due to that negativity being gone. Hope that helps. Here's a question from Pam. I used to dream <clears throat> and then about four years ago, they stopped. Why is this? And is there something I can do to dream more? Well, I always ask fact-finding questions. What happened four years ago? Was there some major thing in your life? Was there a trauma? Was there a major stressor? Did you move? Did go back and look at the four years ago. And because that sometimes there's something in there. Second thing, ask God to reveal to you. Why? Why? Why is it not happening? Go back and, and repent. You know, I usually flush it out. I just go back and say, God, four years ago I was hearing your voice. Reveal to me why I'm no longer hearing you or through dreams or something like that. Reveal it to me. And if it's anything I've done, Lord, I repent now. If anything knowingly or unknowingly that I did that was caused this to happen in Jesus' name. Now, start with that, with something simple. See if it starts to open up a little bit. See if things start to shift or change. Uh, and uh, I'm just saying this will open things up is what I do. Here's one from Sherry. I've been hearing horns and an audible voice just upon wakening in the morning. A little bit uh, frightening, but now threatening. But not threatening, excuse me. It's, uh, it's common. Is this a common way for God to, uh, to speak? Well, listen, everybody. Right when you're waking up or right when you're going to sleep, that twilight place, you're caught between heaven and earth sometimes. You're, you're in their natural body and you're, you're, you're in the spiritual realm of your dreams. You can hear God at angels. And if you're hearing something like horns blowing, that means God's announcing something new in your life, Sherry. God is bringing horns to blow. He blows those horns over the announcement of something new. And my prophetic word for this month, it confirms these things right now that there is something new coming for 2018 and people are dreaming about it. God is blowing horns. I tell you, it's going to be a great time. Here's a question from Shorty. Um, <clears throat> How will we know when revival starts to happen? Oh my goodness, Shorty, you will know. When the Jesus people revival started, you know, people didn't realize it. It had started, but it was started outside the church. It didn't start. It was a, bit nasty. There was a last known revival in, the North, in North America in the 19, early 1970s. Massive revival. And hippies were getting baptized. And, and, but you know what? The church didn't see it. This is what I want to tell you. How will you know? Look for things happening, but don't judge what you don't understand. It always comes outside the camp. Jesus started outside the camp. John the Baptist was outside the camp when he baptized Jesus and the, the dove came down. And the, these things happen. We want to make sure that we have eyes to see because it's usually offensive to the church. It's always been offensive. That's why God's bringing the revival, because it has to happen, because he has to break through. Hello, McFly. He's got to break through our, uh, whatever it is that, that's holding it back, our, our mindsets, our ways, whatever it is that's holding it back, because we are way overdue. But I want to tell you, friend, we haven't seen the full-blown revival, but we're seeing pockets of it. We're seeing things happen. I released a prophetic word back in March. It was actually in my prophetic forecast for this year, for the 2017. And I talked about March 17th, 2017, would be the return of God's glory. That Prophet Bob Jones, who's in heaven now, he saw that 40 years ago, from March 17th, the glory lifted from the church because of using the anointing, for man's gain, all kinds of different things, but the greater glory, we still see a little bit, but we're talking greater glory. I've been around some of the people who walk in the glory, but they do, there's gold dust, there's 
uh, I, you know, gold fillings appear in people's mouths, money appear in people's wallets. I'm not kidding you. I am not kidding. And I am so, Joshua Mills, David uh, Herzog, I've seen the glory uh, come upon many, many people. I've watched Patricia King step into the glory. I've seen Katie Sousa step into the glory. So it follows them. You get around some of these people, you'll see some of these miracles, reconstructive miracles and stuff happening. I want to tell you that this is a time that they, they have not missed it. There's certain people that God saves, but last March, the glory returned. And that's when all of a sudden I start having these encounters. I'm telling you now, the glory of God is here. Just You just need to step into it. That, that membrane between earth and heaven is so thin right now. It's like a curtain. Uh, you know, it used to be a door. It's now down to a curtain. And according to Hebrews 10, uh, 19, if you look it up, Jesus is the curtain. And we can enter into this time into a greater intimacy with him. <clears throat> Good question. All right, here's a question uh, from December Baby. I received a spiritual and natural promotion, uh, but <clears throat> have been experiencing fear and grief. Is this normal? Well, uh, it is normal to, uh, it's not normal to experience fear uh, and grief, actually. It is normal to experience some uh, trepidation or some challenge, but here's what God's doing. He's, yeah, okay, let me re rephrase that. Now I'm understanding. It. Yes, it could be normal once you get a promotion because God's now revealing to you the things that you're going to need to deal with to get through it, to get it. And fear and grief probably was something that was holding you back in the past. So if you get a promotion, you start fit, you know, experiencing old behavior. You start fear, experiencing depression, fear and grief. It's the Lord saying, hey, guess what? You'll need to deal with those things to walk in it. That's why we need to contend for this. Contend for the new. One of the biggest mistakes I've seen after being in the prophetic a very long time. Is people get a prophetic word and they actually go out and... and and they start celebrating and doing things like maybe they hear a word that they're going to have financial breakthrough, so they charge up their credit cards. Oh, folks, that's the last thing you want to do. You want to wait till you see the evidence of it. In fact, you're getting the prophetic word of this financial breakthrough because the enemy's trying to take you out financially. And some people uh, don't understand the maturity of the prophetic. Uh, and I again, I go through that in my... Oh, one of the places I go through it is my online uh, inter uh, school called Hearing the Voice of God 365. You want to check it out, hearinggod365.com. And we have the school of 12 sessions, and you can take it anytime, but it's, we have live interaction as well and monthly phone calls with me. We walk through things like this. Listen, we've got some good examples and stories coming back for people to, to break through their fears and get through this stuff and hear God in whole different ways. Here's one from Donna. Does war, warfare always come when revelation is about to happen? Uh, not always, uh, but often warfare will come because, uh, think about it, you know, the the enemy uh, doesn't want you to see it, but it doesn't, doesn't mean you have to expect it. Please don't expect it. You know, please, if you get a clear word, don't ex wait for the enemy to hit you. It might open the door to it. So when you get a word or revelations coming, you press in, begin to press in and, and expect God to bring it. But then also be, be praying the prayers. If you see anything happening with warfare, begin to get those breakthrough prayers. You know, break through those things and ask God to show you what it is that Satan doesn't want you to see. That's a warfare breakthrough prayer. Ask God to show you these things. It's my prayer every single day. I ask God to show me what I need to repent for this day. And well, as I said, I said that just now, there was a bright white light flashed uh, in the spirit over several people because God's releasing something to you right now. Here's another question. Last one. Question from Linda or uh, Lindy's. <clears throat> In the 24 month prophetic word starting to happen now, it is the 24 month. I released a prophetic word 24 months ago. Yes, it is. It goes back to September 2015. And yes, it is. And this prophetic word that I'm releasing now is about to be released over you. It is a result of those things as well. All right. Well, you know what? 
Thank you so much to Pam. And I want to encourage you. I'm going to do the breakthrough prayer here, but I want to encourage you to go to my website, dougasson.com. Check out what we're talking about, some of the deals we have going. But Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Activate it. Activate the ability to hear your voice. Dreams and visions rising above angelic encounters. And most of all, we have this for the purpose, according to Ephesians 1.17. Wisdom and revelation come to know him better. Lord, I pray that we would know you better. I pray that everybody listening to my voice right now would have an encounter with your love and an encounter with the great love great love in the spirit that's only known for those who walk close to the Lord. And I pray that that happens to you in Jesus name. Wow. Amen. Thanks my team. Hey, thanks everybody. See you on the internet.